Not all Texas Republicans are going along with it. Meet Sarah Davis. You're thinking Wendy Davis. No, totally different Davis. No relation, different party. Sarah Davis is a three-term Texas lawmaker. She's a breast cancer survivor. She's an attorney. She is a Republican. She is a Texas Republican. In the summer of 2013, during the Wendy Davis filibuster of the anti-abortion vote that shut down dozens of clinics across the state, Sarah Davis made a name for herself as the only House Republican to vote against those new restrictions. Sarah Davis explained her position at the time, quote, a traditional Republican perspective is personal freedom, individual responsibility, and limited government. That is, to me, what being a Republican is. So just as much as I'm opposed to overregulation of industry, I'm opposed to the legislature practicing medicine. I'm opposed to the legislature practicing medicine. That was Sarah Davis, Texas Republican lawmaker, speaking in 2013. And now, because it's an odd-numbered year, now, with this new plan by Texas Republicans to shut down some of the last remaining women's health care clinics in the state, using the issue of cancer screenings to do it, now, Representative Sarah Davis is back at it, warning of the consequences if her own party's plan becomes law. And this time, super interesting, she might be getting somewhere, maybe. Republican State Rep Sarah Davis told a committee in the Texas House this week that they should reject this new plan, the one that targets the cancer screening clinics. She told this House committee, quote, if we don't have the provider network, women cannot be served and they will die. At least for now, uh, her proposal to undo what the Republican State Senate is trying to do that would shut down all these clinics, at least for now, this lone Republican voice of Sarah Davis appears to have persuaded her fellow former fetuses uh, on the House side to advance her bill, to try to undo what has been proposed in the Senate, to advance her bill that effectively would keep the clinics open. Joining us now for the interview is Sarah Davis. She is a Republican state rep from the great state of Texas. Representative Davis, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you being here. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So. I knew about your stance when you were the lone House Republican to vote against the bill that was filibustered by the Democrats and got all that attention. I knew that you had this stance in, that, that you had articulated around abortion rights and limited government. I was still surprised this week to read that you had convinced the House Budget Committee to advance your idea on this, to maybe stand up to other Republicans uh, on, on this clinic thing. Were you surprised? Well, um, it's very early in the budget process. Uh, we still will have to debate the budget once it moves to the full floor. But uh, I, you know, I'm 38 years old. I was diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 32. I spent um, the entire, a full year of my life with surgeries and chemotherapy and radiation. And so obviously when we're talking about programs that are screening women for breast cancer and cervical cancer, I feel very passionately about it. And I um, do think that my colleagues um, will pay, have paid me some deference because of that personal mm -hmm. experience. And, you know, to me, I, I am the face of cancer. Um, cancer does not discriminate um, based on age or race. And it certainly doesn't care what primary you vote in. <laughs> and so that's the message that I've been trying to get across. And, and being a cancer survivor that's negative for the gene and has no family history of breast cancer, I know firsthand that early detection is key. And so I think um, a, a, lo a lot of my colleagues tend to have respect uh, for the position because of the experience that I've had. Um, I do not believe that women's health is a partisan issue, and I do my very best from an advocate standpoint to make it, or at least try to make it as nonpartisan as possible. Um, but we are still fairly early on in the process, and, and um, the fight's definitely not over yet. I wonder when the way that you have articulated your perspective on this, not just in terms of that very powerful personal story that you just told here, but also just in terms of your ideology and how you believe in limited government and that you believe that as a Republican and as a, as a small government conservative, this just isn't the realm for government to be imposing itself between women and their health care providers. I just, I wonder if your colleagues in private 
are more sympathetic to that position uh, than they might appear to be in public. I know that the politics around this issue in Texas are, are really strict. I'm sure you've paid somewhat of a political price for taking this stand. Do you feel like away from the glare of political necessity that, that your fellow Republicans are susceptible to these kind of arguments that you've been making? Um, you know, I, I just I can't speak on behalf of of my colleagues. Obviously, we have conversations in private and and I do think that there is definitely support for funding um, programs like the breast and cervical cancer screening program. I think that Republicans can certainly acknowledge that losing a 75 percent match is not the fiscally responsible thing to do. But at the end of the day, we all are elected by a constituency. And so um, my, rep, my colleagues are making votes and making policy decisions based on the people that elect them. And I make policy decisions and take the votes that I uh, take based on the, on the folks that elect me. Um, so, I mean, there are um, discussions, but at the end of the day, um, we answer to we answer to people who come out and vote and we answer to our constituents. Do you ever envision a time at which women's health issues, as you described them, might end up going back to being a less partisan issue? Obviously, you're a Republican who staked out a very lonely stance on this issue. Other than you, it has been very partisan. Do you do you are you optimistic about that changing? I actually am very optimistic. I don't feel alone. Um, in on this issue, I may be the only Republican that votes against certain unconstitutional abortion restrictions, <laughs> but I have got the support of thousands of men and women that come out to the polls and elect me. I'm in my third term. I've won three Republican primaries, two of which were contested. I've won three general elections, all three of which were contested. I receive emails and calls of support from men and women, not only in my district and throughout the state, but throughout the country. And in fact, the majority of those correspondents are from self-proclaimed Republicans mm. saying thank you for expressing what we believe to be is the true Republican core philosophy, personal freedom, individual responsibility, and limited government. I do my very best to try to remember that philosophy and be consistent in how I vote. Um, not, not everyone's perfect, and I'm sure any, you know, anyone could find a place where I may not have been 100% um, consistent, but I do my best, and I, but I certainly don't feel alone. I feel very optimistic. Sarah Davis, Republican state rep from Texas. I've so enjoyed talking to you tonight. Please tell uh, your fellow Texas Republicans that I'd love to talk to a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> and, that, and that there was no biting. Everything went great. It was a pleasant conversation. It was really nice That's to have right. you here. I will give you great reviews, and I'm sure you're <laughs> going to get lots of Texas Republicans. <laughs> I'll hold you to it. Thank you very much, Tim. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. That was great.